begins by explaining that 2026 practically became the year everyone woke up to an uncomfortable truth. The future of electric cars doesn't just depend on charging speed, but on how each manufacturer will deal with the absurd amount of heat these new batteries generate. And that's where the Model 2 comes in. This compact car that seemed simple at first glance, but now carries the responsibility of debuting aluminum ion technology in the mass market. The curious thing is that when Tesla revealed that these batteries could charge in less than 10 minutes, many people were thrilled until they realized that such speed comes at a hefty thermal cost. And it's precisely at this point that the conversation gets interesting because it's no exaggeration to say that the entire industry became somewhat uneasy about what was to come, as if everyone were waiting for the next big stumble or the next big leap. He comments that the challenge starts with the basics. Heat, not the slight warmth of a laptop heating up on your lap, but a dense and aggressive heat that rises so quickly that even the most experienced engineers raised an eyebrow. In tests, while a traditional 55 kWh lithium pack rises between 8 and 10 digs during a typical overcharge, the aluminum ion pack can simply double that increase in a matter of minutes. It seems like a small difference when put like that, but in practice, it's like trying to boil water in a kettle versus a frying pan. The result changes completely. He jokes that if anyone thinks this is just a technical detail, it's because they've never touched something that exceeds 50 degrees C without warning. He goes on to explain that the Model 2 doesn't have the luxury of the huge battery packs of the Model S or the Cybertruck, which retain heat much more easily. Here we're talking about an affordable car with batteries between 48 and 55 which simply don't have enough thermal mass to hold the line. It's as if the car had a small tank being filled by a gigantic hose under pressure. The energy enters too quickly, heating everything up at once. And that's where Tesla had to think, like an engineer and a juggler at the same time, balancing low cost with a technology that generally only works well when there's space and a generous budget. He points out that tests revealed another serious concern. The rate at which the temperature rises is not uniform. The central modules of the pack are like the inside of a freshly baked loaf of bread, too hot inside while the outside looks okay. In the centers of the modules, temperatures can exceed 50 Heibrichsee concede before the driver even finishes replying to a text message. And this type of localized heat is treacherous because it ages the battery from the inside even when the outside looks healthy. He even mentions that this has already derailed some promises from other startups before Tesla entered the game in force. He comments that if this is already a challenge under normal conditions, imagine in places like Phoenix or Miami, where the car starts the day with the battery pack already preheated by the ambient temperature of 30 fibrils during C. In these regions, the battery is already hot even before the supercharger does its job. The opposite is also complicated. In cold regions, trying to push too much charge into a cold pack can create thermal bubbles and stress the internal connections. This contrast between extremes has become one of Tesla's biggest concerns in 2025. And for him, it makes perfect sense. Because anyone who has ever tried to charge a cell phone in the sun knows how quickly things can get out of control. He says that, looking at it from that perspective, it even seems like Tesla embarked on an unnecessary adventure by choosing such aggressive batteries for an inexpensive car. But he comments that Elon Musk has never liked playing it easy, and everyone has already noticed that. What makes this topic even more intriguing is Tesla's confidence in solving something that other companies preferred to avoid for fear of high costs or thermal risks that are difficult to explain to the consumer. For him, this boldness sounds like a direct message to the market. If you don't try, we will. He emphasizes that ultra-fast charging is, in itself, a powerful asset. Nobody wants to wait half an hour at a charging station, even more so in 2026, with people increasingly accustomed to instant gratification. 
And that's why the Model 2 needs this technology, even if it brings this extra layer of complexity. He notes how Tesla operates on the idea that speed is not a luxury, it's a necessity, and that the battery needs to keep up with that pace without complaint. It's almost like preparing an athlete to run a marathon, always warmed up, always on point, always under control. He begins by saying that if there's one thing that bothers engineers, it's uncontrolled heat. But what really drives everyone crazy is poorly distributed heat, the kind that doesn't spread evenly, creates hot spots, and silently corrodes the battery's lifespan from the inside. And that's exactly what's happening with the aluminum ion modules under high load. Tesla discovered that the Model 2's biggest enemy isn't the heat itself, but the fact that it accumulates in the center of the battery like the inside of a hot loaf of bread, while the edges remain cold. And then, my friend, you know what happens. What seems stable on the outside might be melting on the inside. He explains that this thermal inequality is what engineers call an aggressive thermal gradient. In simple terms, it's like trying to bake a pizza in the oven with a blowtorch. The center will turn to charcoal before the edges get warm. During overcharging, the innermost cells can reach 50 Christierings in less than two minutes, while the outer ones don't even reach 42 Tutigs. This difference is enough to initiate accelerated degradation processes. And the most dangerous part? The user doesn't notice any of it. The car continues to run without warning, without smoke, but inside the battery is aging at an accelerated rate. He comments that, under these conditions, the chemical reactions within the cells enter a cycle of wear and tear. Internal resistance increases, performance begins to decline, and in some extreme cases, there is even a risk of more serious thermal events, the kind we hope never to see in a garage. And even though Tesla is a pioneer in safety, the challenge here is twofold. Delivering maximum performance without allowing this core to overheat. It's no exaggeration to say that this has become a high-level technical puzzle and that only a handful of companies in the world are trying to solve it. He points out that in places like Texas or southern Spain, where the ambient temperature already approaches 38 degrees in the shade, the problem is amplified. The car starts hot, the charge kicks in like a burst, and the battery's core becomes a cauldron. Even with active ventilation, the internal heat takes a long time to escape because it's insulated by the outer layers. It's as if the battery's own structure is trapping the heat where it shouldn't be. And this is even more dangerous on urban journeys with short stops, where the car doesn't have time to cool down between charges. He points out that this type of localized heating reduces not only the battery's lifespan, but also its charging efficiency. Hotter cells work poorly, generate more electrical resistance, and this translates into energy loss in the form of heat instead of increased range. In other words, besides overheating, the battery delivers less mileage than it should. And this, let's face it, goes against everything consumers expect from a modern electric car. The expectation is range, speed, and reliability, not a battery pack that suffers silently inside. He admits that, personally, he finds it fascinating how something so invisible can have such an impact. Most drivers will never know that their battery has hotter zones than others. But Tesla engineers know, and for that very reason, they began to look for solutions that act directly on these critical points, instead of treating the pack as a single homogeneous thing. This change in mindset is what is allowing Tesla to bet on aluminum ion for an entry-level model like the Model 2. He begins by saying that Tesla's brilliant idea was to stop trying to cool the entire system as if it were a single unit. Instead, Elon and his team decided to target the epicenter of the problem, concentrated heat. And it was by looking back, specifically at the Cybertruck and Model Y projects, that they found an elegant and surprisingly inexpensive solution, the so-called micro-channel cooling plate. It sounds complicated, but imagine it as a kind of plate with tiny veins where the coolant flows tightly against the battery cells. And the best part? It works like a thermal sponge, 
drawing heat from the hottest areas extremely efficiently. He explains that this technology had already been tested in the Cybertruck since 2024, but there the focus was on cooling large packs with hundreds of cells. In the case of the Model 2, Tesla reduced the size of the system, reused the concept, and adapted it to something much more streamlined without losing performance. The secret lies in the design of the channels. Instead of a smooth plate, like in previous generations, this version uses microchannels densely distributed under each module. It's like comparing a central air conditioning system with a cooling system directed to each room in the house. More control, less waste. He comments that the most impressive thing isn't even the functionality itself, but the cost. Tesla managed to manufacture these panels using extruded aluminum, a simple, lightweight, and inexpensive material. No exotic composites or space-age alloys. And because it's a process already mastered by the industry, the cost per car is between use $40 and use $50, which, according to him, is almost unbelievable, considering the impact this has on the battery's thermal safety. It's the kind of innovation that only happens when someone decides to combine engineering with a vision for scale. He emphasizes that this proximity between the cooling channels and the cells is not just a smart choice, it's a necessity. During 4D C to 6 degrees CC loads, heat needs to be removed in real time. Any delay and the internal temperature skyrockets. With microchannels, heat from the central points is sucked away more efficiently than in traditional systems, reducing peaks of 50 degsu to around 42 to 43 degsu, a difference that, for those who understand batteries, means keeping the chemistry functioning within safe limits. He emphasizes that Tesla's copy and adapt strategy is what sets the brand apart. While other automakers try to reinvent everything from scratch, Tesla takes what it already knows works and puts it in a new package. And that speeds up the whole process. He even jokes that it's like that cook who reuses leftover sauce from lunch for dinner and still gets compliments. The difference is that, in this case, the dinner could save lives. Literally, if it prevents dangerous overheating. He begins by saying that the name might sound a bit too technical, but the concept of PCM, phase change material, is simpler than it seems. Imagine a wax that melts when heated, absorbing a surge of heat at the moment when the temperature threatens to get out of control. Now imagine this applied inside an electric car, between the battery cells. This smart wax layer isn't there by chance. It comes into action precisely when the heat appears most aggressively in the first seconds of supercharging. And if that seems like magic, it's because it borders on poetic engineering. He comments that the most impressive thing about this material is the timing of its action. During the first 60 to 90 seconds of fast charging, when the microchannels are just beginning to circulate the coolant, the PCM is already there, acting as a thermal shield. It melts silently and, in this process, steals 5 to 7 degrees Celsius from the system. It may seem like a small amount, but, as he says, in a thermal battle, every degree is a victory. And in the case of the Model 2, which has no margin for error, this type of buffer makes all the difference between efficiency and chaos. He reveals that this layer weighs between 2 and 3 kiloton in total and is strategically positioned between the most critical battery modules. The material itself has a composition based on industrial waxes with heat-conducting additives, something Tesla has optimized for years to balance cost and performance. The result? A material that absorbs heat like a chemical sponge without taking up much space and without requiring external energy to function. It simply acts. And that, in the world of automotive engineering, is a valuable rarity. He mentions that he heard from a Tesla engineer that the first version of PCM was tested in the Model S, but was ultimately discarded for being too heavy. However, now, with denser cells and more concentrated thermal challenges, the return of this material was seen as inevitable, and the way it fits into the Model 2 seems almost natural. 
It doesn't require major structural changes. It's inexpensive. Literally, it costs less than $20 per pack, and it perfectly complements the microchannel system. It's like that quiet friend who doesn't draw attention but saves the group in a pinch. He emphasizes that the presence of PCM in the pack is also a way to increase battery resilience in more intense urban situations. Imagine a ride-sharing driver in a hot city, taking short breaks between rides and stopping to charge several times a day. Without this thermal buffer, the Model 2's pack would be under constant stress. With it, the heat generated in these consecutive recharges has somewhere to go, drastically reducing the risk of premature chemical degradation. It's the kind of detail that the consumer may not even know exists, but that completely changes the experience in real-world use. He begins by saying that, when everyone thought Tesla had exhausted its arsenal of thermal solutions, comes the final card, a mini heat pump, custom designed for the Model 2. And the most curious thing, it's not a new pump. In fact, it's a shrunken version of the one already operating in the Model Y, only now redesigned to work with smaller packs, less physical space, and an audience unwilling to pay high prices. And even being compact, it does a job worthy of larger equipment, keeping the battery temperature under control in any weather condition without consuming energy like a shopping mall air conditioner. He explains that this heat pump works in two ways. During fast charging, it helps extract the residual heat left over after the PCM and microchannels have done their job. And then, when the car is moving or stopped in cold weather, it has the opposite function. It redistributes the accumulated heat to keep the pack heated within the ideal range. It's a dynamic, almost living system that responds to the environment with agility. And if you think that sounds excessive for an affordable car, it's because you're still thinking of EVs as a luxury, not as the new standard. He explains that, unlike older systems that used electrical resistors or fixed ducts, this heat pump uses components from Tesla's own production line. In other words, no expensive or hard-to-find parts. And it's this reuse of technology that allows them to keep the cost between $40 and use $60 per car which, for him, is practically a miracle compared to other automakers that spend four or five times more on less efficient solutions. It's the kind of engineering economy that doesn't sacrifice performance. He says that, personally, he finds this solution brilliant because it solves a much underestimated problem, thermal stability after recharging. Most electric cars cool down slowly after charging, which, on hot days, can leave the battery pack operating at dangerous temperatures for longer than it should. Tesla's heat pump acts as a kind of fan with a brain, accelerating residual cooling and preparing the car for the next acceleration. And all this without the driver even noticing. He shares that, in simulations done by Tesla itself, this heat pump manages to keep the Model 2's battery pack between 35 degrees C and 42 degrees C, even in outdoor environments ranging from 10 degrees C to 40 degrees C. This means that, in both a Canadian winter and a Texan summer, the system reacts quickly to keep the cells at their sweet spot. This not only improves performance, but also avoids wear peaks that, over time, would shorten the battery's lifespan. And considering we're talking about an entry-level car, this is simply sensational. He points out that this type of active thermal solution also contributes to the overall efficiency of the vehicle. With the battery operating at ideal temperatures, internal electrical resistance decreases, range improves, and charging time is optimized. In other words, the heat pump isn't just there to save the battery pack, but also to make the user experience smoother 